Greetings, this is Greg. Let's discuss spin recovery and snap rolls in Rise of Flight. We will be using Rise of Flight video footage for demonstration a little later. I see a lot of players, especially when flying the DR1 or Camel, engaging in low altitude turn fights that eventually lead to a stall spin crash. I find that often it's not the shooting that determines the outcomes, it's the flying. Some airplanes, like the mighty Falls D12, are less susceptible to this because they don't usually engage in turn fights at low altitude and because spins are pretty easy to avoid in this type of airplane. However, if you can do spins, you can also do snap rolls, and snap rolls are useful, so it's well worth learning the entry and recovery procedures, regardless of what airplane you fly. A spin is an interesting condition in which both left and right wings are stalled, and one side sort of flies around the other. The key point here is that in order to get into a spin, the wing must first be stalled. Let's look at a diagram. There's a red line drawn from the leading edge to the trailing edge of the wing. That's called the cord line. There's also a red line below the wing that represents the aircraft's flight path, or more correctly, the relative wind, meaning the direction from which the air is hitting the plane. The difference between these two lines, or the angle, is the angle of attack. The angle of attack in the first image is 10 degrees. Now, as you slow your airplane down, in order to maintain level flight, you're going to need to bring the nose up. This increases the angle of attack. At a specific angle of attack, which is 16 degrees in the example in the second picture here, the wing begins to stall. In the picture on the far right, the wing is fully stalled at 17 degrees. Once stalled, the lift from the wing decreases massively and the plane starts to fall out of the sky. What you need to take away from this is the wing can be stalled at any airspeed and any attitude, even pointed straight down. If you pull the stick back far enough, the angle of attack will increase, and pull it back far enough and it will increase enough to stall the wing, period. Now typically we stall the wing at low speeds because we're already at a high angle of attack in that condition, thus closer to stalling. Stall recovery is shown in this government diagram. As you slow down, in order to maintain level flight, you will need to increase pitch. That increases angle of attack, and if you keep slowing down and maintaining altitude, eventually the wings will stall. You'll notice as the plane begins to stall, it will buffet and sort of oscillate in pitch and roll. It's very important to recognize the signs of an impending stall so you can recover right away. You don't want to let the stall develop, especially in some of the twitchier airplanes like the Sopwith Camel. At this point, you'll recover by regaining your angle of attack. In this case, that means you'll move the yoke forward. Once you've moved it forward, the wings will start flying again. Add power if you're not already at full power, level the wings with the ailerons, reestablish your climb, and get back in the fight. So to recap, the stall recovery procedure is to regain angle of attack and then fly the airplane normally using power and other controls as desired. Notice that I say regain angle of attack and not simply always move the yoke forward. There are some cases where you could be in an inverted stall which would require you to move the yoke back. However, that's very, very rare. For our purposes here today, stall recovery means move the yoke forward. A spin is a condition where the wings are stalled, but the less stalled side sort of flies around the other side. Now, in order to get the plane into a spin, it must be stalled first. That means if you get really good at stall recognition and recovery, unintentional spins won't be a problem for you. Let's discuss spin entry and recovery. To enter it, initially you stall the plane. Then a yaw moment needs to be introduced to force the plane into the spin. Typically, that means you induce the spin with rudder input. However, especially in rise of flight, often forces from the spinning propeller and engine up front can do it for you. In this example, when the plane is stalled, the pilot adds full right rudder to get the plane to spin to the right. Recovery is simple, throttle to idle, ailerons neutral, opposite rudder, and stick forward. You may need to hold the controls in that position for a while before it recovers depending on what airplane you're flying. Now in the German airplanes, which recover pretty well, the aileron position doesn't matter, so you may want to pre-position them for the spin exit. However, as a general rule, the aileron should be neutral for spin recovery. Again, recovery is throttled idle, ailerons neutral, opposite rudder, stick forward. Once the plane's out of the spin, be careful not to overspeed it. Now, while in a spin, some ailerons will actually work in reverse. That's because the aileron that goes down will deepen the stall on that wing and actually reduce lift. 
So in some cases, spin recovery requires the ailerons to be put into the direction of the spin. Also, some airplanes don't have the down elevator authority to recover. In these cases, you need to use power and or oscillate the elevator to get the nose to bob up and down repeatedly until it finally drops far enough to break the stall. That's enough talk. Let's hop into the DR1 and do some spins. We'll initially spin to the right. I'm pulling back to get the airplane stalled. It's in the stall now. Full right rudder and boom, it goes into the spin. To recover, throttle to idle. New ailerons neutral, opposite rudder, yoke forward, and as you can see, as soon as I move the yoke forward, it comes right out. I'll have to be a little bit careful not to overspeed the airplane and over-G it on the way uh, climbing back out of the spin. Now, the left spin in the DR1 is not very aggressive. In fact, I'm doing everything I can here to hold it into a left spin. There went a camel. We'll get him in a minute. The plane doesn't spin to the left very aggressively. In fact, almost anything I do will bring it out. The recovery procedure is still technically the same, but uh, it just comes out so easily to the left. Anyhow, it is descending like crazy. It's turning very tightly, but the left spin in the DR1 is just not a very dangerous thing. As you can see here, it's difficult to hold it into it at all, but recovery procedure is the same. Uh, we'll establish normal flight and uh, let's go get that camel. All right, there he is. The DR1 will sometimes outturn the camel and sometimes not. They actually have about the same turn performance. There's some variables that control that. That could be a whole subject for another video. I'm not going to go into it now. Concentrated all the fire on the uh, right side there and took the wing out fairly quickly. Now, we're going to do snap rolls. If you can do a spin, you can do a snap roll. A snap roll is a spin with a lot more entry speed, so it tends to be in the horizontal direct direction. So we're cruising along here, pull the yoke all the way back, rudder all the way over, and recovery is just like a spin recovery. This is the fastest way possible to roll a DR1. And there are some airplanes in the game, in fact, I'd say no airplane in the game can follow the DR1 when it does a, a snap roll invert it and then does a split S. Uh, the DR1 can escape just about anything with that maneuver. Here it is again. Uh, you can do this with as little as 200 meters between you and the ground and no other airplane that I know of in Rise of Flight can follow the DR1 through that maneuver. Now we're in the Falls D12. Very different type of airplane. Uh, the Falls spins to the right normally spins to the left normally except that it takes a lot of time to recover from a left spin in the falls. Anyway, here's the right spin. As soon as I put in the uh, the exit inputs, it pulls right out of the spin and uh, again, get the nose back up to level, get to full throttle and, and escape. Uh, no big deal at all to right hand spins in the falls. Now we'll do a spin to the left and it takes a second to develop. Okay, now I have the controls position to get out of the spin and it's still going around, but you just hold it long enough and there you go. Falls comes out of the spin. Typically you don't end up in spins in the falls because you just don't fly it on the edge of a stall very often. Now snap rolls in the falls are pretty useful. In fact, it's one of the only maneuvers that the falls can do really well. It does it better than almost any other airplane in the game. If you're flying along at high speed and suddenly there's a spatter SC5 coming in behind you, you can use this to establish your desired bank angle very quickly and uh, get, out of the, get out of the gun sights of that airplane. So you saw the roll rate in the snap roll is really, really fast. Using the ailerons, the roll rate in the falls is, is here it is, it's painfully slow and uh, maneuvering out of the way of an enemy aircraft is problematic. But the snap roll works really well to the right in the falls. You can see how fast that is relative to using the ailerons. Now, snap rolling the falls to the left, not such a hot idea. In fact, if you want to go to the left, you're better off snapping at 270 degrees to the right and then getting into a left turn. There's the left snap roll, and you can see, much like the left spin, and remember a snap roll is a spin, a left snap roll just eventually develops into a spin that takes a long time to get out of. So uh, left snap rolls are normally not a good move, although tactically there may be some situations where you might want to do that. 
So that's about it for this video. I, I hope you've, you've uh, learned a little bit from it. I actually learned a little bit making it. Uh, the overall point is really practice stall entry and recovery. Get the plane to the brink of the stall and then get it out. And if you're really good at that, you won't end up in a spin. But practice your spin recoveries too, so that if you do get into one, you can get out. And also, the snap rolls are useful maneuvers, so you may want to practice those. That's it for this edition. I uh, hope everybody's having a good day. Goodbye.